Time for the potential Magadai Fest. Mongol on Mongol for game one between the Viper and B. Don't be deceived. We do not have the Rus and the Abbasids. It is going to be both playing as the Mongols, which means the critical ingredient in success is going to be where the hell are their Muvus? Hmm. Scout now going directly to the other direction. Tries to go and find those in the center. Oh. Okay. So they, oh, okay, that Uvu. Oh, oh, oh no, <laughs> we've been here before. <laughs> this... And the second one is even worse this time. Oh no, it's... it's the other direction for Viper. Yeah, so like Viper, his choices are evenly bad, right? You can either take the one to the south or the one to the north, but like they're, they're both pretty far out. The one good thing for Viper at least is look at his gold veins. That's a nice little chugga chugga choo choo train of, of gold being returned as you move one to the other with a step readout layer. As you can see, a nice little data chain there, right? Whereas mm -hmm. B doesn't have that same efficiency. He's kind of stepping back upon himself in a triangle formation. But I think mm -hmm. that's it's premature to just highlight that detail. Like that is much later in the game. What's going to matter is the opening. And when we look at the opening, this isn't as cursed as what we previously saw. Like Viper has a very bad Uvu placement, but he has a good goal placement. Look at B's. He has a good Uvu placement. But you might notice that something else is lacking in his condensed space as his gold is pretty far away and somewhat exploitable should raids come in from those aforementioned Magadai. <laughs> you and your Magadai, you're dreaming so much. <laughs> big, hey man, big, big when both of them though. drop archer ranges and there's a hundred Magadai in the field at 20 minutes in, I'm going to say I told you so. Okay, okay. okay. I've seen it too I'll frequently. Okay, big difference compared to our first Mongo Mirror that we saw in the set before. No scout edit by our player with the better spawn mm. that means b right now is still looking for sheep and didn't really see that exposed ovu therefore went for the pasture and didn't know how he could have exploited viper's map big big difference and therefore b goes for the more defensive approach no exploit here yeah it's interesting actually i think the reason that you go for the second scout is if you go for the racks because then it's like you can burn stuff down um, in this situation, because neither player wants to go for a Rax, I think it makes more sense to not waste time building a Scout for a Villager, because your timing is different. It's Feudal Castle versus Dark Age. I think Scouts doubling up, like, it's usually good if you don't know what your opponent's going to do, but in a mirror matchup, because the slightest difference makes the mile, unless you intend to use it in multifunctionality early on, you probably aren't going to find value out of a second one. That being said, B... Proves exactly why you don't need a second scout. You just need some good luck. That is a lot of sheep. He's like, yes, come back to my... He just, he's basically going down the streets yelling, if sheep come with me, they'll be protected. <laughs> and little did they know, he just meant that they'd be protected from dying to vipers, uh, Canes. He'll still whip out his own crooks and just knock them down, as that is going to be a lot of healthy economy early on for B. You yes. Monster. I, I, I look at they, they are months. Look at it. He's not even slowing down. He's like club, 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 club. Need to salt the meat quickly. Got to do it efficiently. B must have scouted the gold in the back, right? I'm so surprised that he won for the one in the front. The one in the back felt so much safer, like slightly right to his town center. I think and now he scouts the safety of it yeah, later. Yeah. Right? Like, he can come back for it later and it's full gold vein. And admittedly, like, if your opponent doesn't show any aggression, this isn't risky. And it's not like you're leaving a building for your opponent to burn. Like, if you were, say, an, a Bastard player doing this, it's a ba bad because your opponent is going to come over and burn down a mining camp. But you can just pack that girl up and move it away. So it, it's not, like, the most efficient, because I agree the run to the back is slightly shorter. But once he gets a step readout, he's going to have more safe value near, on the closest gold vein to his base. Hmm. Okay, I can see that. More protection there. Maybe you can save some towers. Normally you need to do, go for like two towers, maybe even three next to your step right out. Maybe something he can save there. And Viper will be up to Feudal Age a bit faster here, as we can see. Sends more villagers on this landmark as well. Now some harassment at the gold, but not too much happening. The big question is, what army are they going for? Since we are not seeing any stables, feels like both going for archer, archer rangers. And then yeah. big question... Are they going for archers or Mangodai? We're 50% there. <laughs> We're closer to me being right. Feels good. I'm a play-by-play. -play. I'm not meant to be right that often, but it, it feels like it is heading that way. They both like to raid. This is cool as well because it becomes a skill-based matchup in that situation. You have to consider that usually when you try to justify Magadai, 
Uh, you're either looking for mid control because your opponent is trying to aggress long term with like knights or whatever, or you're playing things like pro scouts, or they're playing pro scouts so you can punish it. Those are the usual conditions. There is another one though, and it's when a person has loose economy. And both of them we've already identified have loose economy or loose production in some way. Viper, his Uvu is far out. Meanwhile, B, his gold is far out. So both players have value in going for Magadai here as they will be able to raid without coming under fire from the TC. An important detail for a unit that has a measly 85 health with no range resistance. I can't believe it. Can't believe it that we're actually going to see double Magadai here. Look at how much B is struggling though. Has to send villagers back over and over again. And now has to build the tower. And we questioned earlier, maybe he could have saved those villagers if he went for the gold in the back. And now Khan is getting pushed away. But feels like Mangudai numbers should be pretty equal simply because both going for the same approach. Unless we see something crazy and it's actually a castle edge. I, I say that. Like, we say that, but B hasn't done it yet. Like, he doesn't have an archery range, right? He's just vibing. I think B is going to be a greedy boy. Like, I think he's saving all his honey up for the winter, you know? Like, he's just going to try to come out with the castle age a little bit quicker. Viper, if he baits himself too hard, this could backfire. So, unless you see an opponent get more Magadai, like, one or two is maximum. But it seems because he was scouting in and he saw that B didn't build anything, instead, he's going to hold the resources. This is really smart. This is information warfare right now. Because he was aggressing with his own Khan, he has vital info ahead of B getting it on him. Because B just had to run the entire trek of the map to spot what his opponent was doing. Aerosmith now for the defense here for B, while the Viper is going for the double Mangodai production here. Mm -hmm. A bit questionable, right? Because he doesn't have the info. He knows that we have Aeros, or like at least the tower is something he scouted. Is he maybe scared that B is going for some army? He's lacking. Actually, both are kind of lacking scouting intel. Yeah, that's why he's now going back in. Like, he's trying to get that info. He's going to realize the outpost is there. The good news is Viper's only built one set of Magadai. So it's not too costly. 160 resources, kind of frustrating, but you can still use them. The issue I see, and actually, admittedly, out of the two players, Viper has had this problem in the pub games where I've been watching him do this build. He tends to overinvest in Magadai. He gets stuck with his hand in the cookie jar. He goes up to like eight, sometimes even 10 Magadai before even contemplating Castle Age, which is a really big bait because this unit isn't very cost efficient for its stats in Feudal. It comes online when you get up into Castle Age. That's when you juice it up to like 13 damage per shot, over 100 health on these units and still being the same price. Hmm. But what army composition was he facing? That's the big question. That if was usually for... against knights, I think. So you, he, he does it a lot against French yeah. and against Mongols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes lots of sense then. Because Mongols, it just feels like Horsemen can deal with it, Lancers will deal with it as well in Castle Age. And now we can see Viper had the investment and will be delayed to Castle Age. Still going for some harassment, but shouldn't really find too much. And B with a small advantage, but Viper gets a lot of map control in exchange. And he needs to be really careful. Viper, he's doing a good job setting up these outposts. It's really critical to have these. The Magadai strategy actually, the, the reason a lot of people have been struggling to optimize it is it lives or dies on how you use your Khan. The Khan is critical. Like, I talk about it a lot about how good the Khan is, but I think if you run a Magadai composition especially, it's doubly important because the units are so pricey and they're so squishy. It's critical that you have the maneuver arrows and the attack speed arrows to turn a losing fight into a winning one. So that's the important detail I'm looking for in the coming minutes. As he establishes his network, and as he's slightly behind B on the tech up, he needs to make sure these Magadai are never discombobulated away from the Khan. And this is a problem here. The damage done to this Khan is too much. So now he won't be able to posture aggressively, and it means that B should get a very free castle age with no pressure coming out from these Magadai. Oh, can we see that Khan fall? Oh, 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 oh I got Kobe here. One more hit. Like right now, I, I can tell you that we're gonna probably have to uh, we're gonna have to disqualify that Khan. He's doping. There's no way any normal human can fire at the range he just did. Oh, maybe two more hits. He's gonna get him again. Now, 35 HP, obviously got the upgrade there, but only yeah, scales but percentage wise. Have... Falcon, Falcon, there it is. He sees everything. He's Sauron's eye right now. There's nowhere to run, he says. He's gonna pepper him down. And that is a big lead for B at the 10 minute mark, taking out that Khan now for two minutes. Yeah, and that's so good in the Lancer of the Lancer War. The big question is, is Viper actually going for it? He already has the setup with some outpost there. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for something like, indeed, crossbow approach here. Maybe some spearmen with that. And yeah, indeed, the army composition that he likes to play. If he thinks, okay, I can pressure you because Viper still has quite some map control. And if it's full, crossbow spearmen all in with one, two traps, 
it's basically impossible to address that with Lancers only. Yeah, this is actually the power of what he done with his outpost as well. Oh, Magadai, this is good use. He has to be careful. Remember what he said, though. He doesn't have the Khan anymore, and that means that these are pricey losses as they easily get picked apart. Never juice them up, so still only doing that measly 7 damage. So outposts are going to go up. And the reason he goes for this static formation of barracks and archery range, by the way, is because of those central outposts. He cannot do it without this. He needs the shortest route because his units are inefficient in terms of movement speed. And this means that if he does get in position, which he should be able to, if he hits his timing, he'll be able to build siege and instantly lay into B's base. B in the meantime relies upon raids, which is why he's going in now. Diving in with the Lancers, decides against it when he realizes there's no easy targets though. In fact, B? B? <laughs> Okay. Lance is a little bit drunk there, like, wait, are we red or are we blue? Can I join them? <laughs> Try to poke a bit more now, uh, as you can see. Spring Interesting. Placement, jumps I... into the next tower, nice save by Viper, and that's a solid defense. I was a bit scared for him. Yeah, I feel like he's, I feel like he's being a little bit too hesitant, like a lot of respect being given to the snake, right? He's slivery, I'll give him that. But you could dive there. You have got the maneuver arrows accessible and although those yam movement speed there for the villagers they're a little bit pesky to chase down you don't need many taps to kill off villagers with lancers right it's the one two tap because i'm pretty sure textile still has not been taken on either side yeah i would be surprised not really an upgrade with that we see too much here early on in the game now the second barracks so it will be the full spearman and crossbow approach for now only two feudal age spearmen though not the hottest thing on the block to fight against six lancers the baby spears aren't going to help much, but they do have that root and they do have the stun. That's going to buy time for the crossbows, but is it going to buy enough? He hasn't reached the critical mass. The Khan just respawned, but the defense arrow does come out from B. He's going to be able to tank up here. He needs to be careful. These trades start to get detrimental as he hangs around, especially with the TC firing upon him. So we'll peel away, and it looks like Viper got the better side of that trade. Is even more of the Lancers going to be plowed through? The crossbows wrap around, heavy damage done, and B, a little bit too greedy, a little bit too deep, will be buffered back and away. Brilliant defense here for the Viper. That was so well done. Yeah, he traded off some spearmen, but crossbow numbers are looking pretty solid now. The Springer placement helped him out so much, and uh, he has to be happy with this. Be now getting some rally control. Good for him. Viper will fall behind in that part, but I don't think Viper wants to play the long game. We already have improved siege engineering on the field, so crossbow spearmen push, and he will try to pressure that main gold. Oh, baby. And he's got the short route right now. B, he can do his cheeky little strats where he just wraps around with outposts on the side. He's going to need them as well. This is good for preventive means on flanks. And also, it gives you kind of control over the relics. Also, it means you're giving the yam movement speed to your little shaman boys so they move even quicker. And they do their shuffle back to base. Didn't do the efficiency play, though, with the temple. He didn't put it next to the uvu so he could double produce, which would have allowed him to quickly reach the critical mass of relics. So, mm -hmm. kind of surprised. B is one of the players that tends to do this a lot more frequently. So, I'd be intrigued to know why he didn't choose to do this time around. Travel HP, torch damage flying in, maybe a repair oh, there, but Lancers again taking that's losses. So, not good on the trades. But he feels the pressure. He's trying to address it, but like Lancers aren't the solution. Right now, B needs a transition. The fact that he built a siege workshop, though, that's not the type of transition I was looking for. You know what that means, Dilly? That means he hates anyone who has to walk on two feet. He's a centaur <laughs> lover, right? Because it means if you, that's the only reason you build a siege workshop right now is because you do not want to build infantry. Yeah, Lancers only as a unit, while the opponent kind of has two counter units to yours. It feels like B needed a transition. <laughs> he made a transition, he just didn't make the one we were expecting. And it might cost him dearly <laughs> here. This outpost, this reactionary outpost is going to be pretty late. He needs a second one quicker than this. He's going to be forced off of his gold. And you can see B, he's got 400 surplus gold, but that's it. And everything he wants to produce right now, the entire world to be, costs gold to run. Maganel will at least push Viper away for the moment, but Viper is the one with the Springwood Edge, something that B hasn't got yet, and he can't quickly address because the only way he's building this siege is out of the siege workshop. Khan not there for the defense, wants to arrest some of the woodland, is doing a reasonable job. Now the outpost should be going down. Even Springer in placement, not cancelled there. And it just feels like Viper is putting on so much gold aggression. But as you mentioned earlier, B now in the comfortable position that he can transition away and now still has the accessibility to the defense of gold. Yeah, and 
now with this kind of harassment on the sides, he needs to draw the attention back to Viper's base. This is his whole strategy right now. It's kind of this retracted game style. He doesn't want to give an opportunity where Viper will just breach his base. He needs to kind of have enough defense force back at base that it won't be a quick rush in. And there needs to be this kind of chip damage on the north and south side that draws attention away. Because if Viper continues to just amass forces in the center, he's going to look to break base by 20 minutes. And B right now doesn't have the defense force to deal with that. Like the Spiral Count is still in favor of Viper. And Viper, because he has the infantry able to build siege in the field, he'll always stay ahead of his opponent in the siege department. Ringlet barely not getting the shots in. Ooh, they That's might get some freebies Megalope. on other targets though. I don't think the trap will matter that much, but simply having the spring of advantage, it's so big, and Viper can just double down on numbers so easily. Mm -hmm. Having and to improve siege engineers, finally some crossbows by B, but he obviously didn't upgrade. No, and oh, this this trap, this trap just might die. I don't think it's gonna peel away quick enough. Oh no, G targets didn't move forward. <laughs> they really hate deer, but there's no deer here, so they go after the thing with deer in the name. That's what the spring are doing <laughs> right there. I really weren't a fan uh, of the Bambi it. movie, you know? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> B? I think the Spring crew went on a coffee break. And uh, I believe that Treb's going to be dying soon as well if he's not careful. One more shot will come out. Ooh. And that's just an efficient trade. Like, B, caught not looking because he's busy trying to set up more of these outposts on the side and raid him with the Lancers. He's not paying attention. And Viper has to be happy. He's still increasing as well. Is finding some more bounty. We'll find more villager kills. Oh, no. That's just great macro. Now solid motivation lead for him as well. Is B watching a, a Netflix series on the second monitor or something? I, I feel like he's been caught not looking maybe multiple a movie? times now. Yeah, ma ma what do you maybe think? he's what watching movie that what Bambi movie, movie, right? Like, I think that's what it is. We're just talking about D. He probably heard us like, ooh, I haven't watched that in a while. Cause spoiler alert, it's a dark story but not as dark as the story that is building in this game, as B's face is starting to be exposed. And those poor little passages do not last long against Magan Alpha. He needs to do something. He needs to do it soon. How is he getting food? Is I mean... No pastures? B, that's, that's... Is he expanding somewhere? Is he getting deer? What is this? Built right? another pasture now? Okay, he still has some sheep left, but that's not for long. I mean, I'm looking at his food income right now. It's either the remaining sheep or cannibalism has begun in the, the Mongol society. <laughs> because there's no other way he's getting food. There's no expansion onto, like, deer lines. He's he going for the aggression. B is moving in. That's the blacksmith. <laughs> yeah, but B is forcing the fight. No. Nope. I don't really call that a fight as much as just a death. As B, that was his that was his Hail Mary. Look how strong my siege are. Oh, okay. Siege workshop was a mistake. <laughs> Okay, so but still, Blacksmith obviously not deployed here for B. Now moves further forward, goes for the over at the top, but still, improved siege engineer is not an option. Deer stones likely to fall as well. And Viper with a nice strategic position in front of B's base. B just playing catch up this whole time. He's not really leveraging the value of these outposts and the size to raid in because he can't afford to anymore. He's finding himself drain drive very quickly. The layout of his base doesn't suit himself with this type of play, this retracted style of gameplay. He hasn't got anywhere defensible to retreat to. His woodline is depleting soon. That's going to drain him there. The step readout shouldn't be long from done on depleting the back gold vein. And after that, everything you're going to do is going to be exposed to the pressure of Viper. And Viper continues to extend his network of outposts at the front. So my concern is like, where is the, the Hail Mary? Where's the cow play from B? Because he still hasn't made the transition we were looking for here. Like, there's no He's cheap awesome. unit like Horseman, because he can't afford it. He doesn't have enough patches mm -hmm. to get to the sheep mm -hmm. for that. His lances are inefficient against this strategy. And because he doesn't have the Siege advantage, he can't rely on Clump's Zerg-type units to just run in and kill out his opponent's Siege. And he went for the Prayer Tent so early, but still in a Relic Deficit. Behind the Swiper got quite some nice control. Let's take a look. Springles trading off one for one. Oh, it looks like it should even up. Slight edge, actually. No, B. Getting caught off guard there. And he has the repair crew at home at base, right? Like, he should have the edge here. That's the baffling part. Like, the, the opening trades really kind of snowballed this in favor of Viper. It's because B didn't micro his siege initially. It meant that Viper's continued to build up the numbers to a critical mass to instant kill him. It's going to force a bad fight. B has to rush out and look at the spears. Speaking of Zerg forces, Viper's got some for you. The irony sets in as he attacks the former Starcraft Pro with a Zerging strategy. Cheap spearmen to overwhelm and the crossbowmen getting no value at all. And the Maganels oh, always force him away. But where do you go? Is he building another seed workshop? No B, way. What? He lost one at the front. The traps did the work there. But how does this save you? 
Well, it's 26 military against 57. You need to pull out some wild magic. But Mangle's not so good against the crossbows. Yeah, you're still splitting here. Oh, but now the, the Spearman raid at the woodland as well. Now the Yam gets them away, but where do they run? Where are they going towards? Even if, even if you get them out, it's idle economy right now. And yes, you do have surplus wood and gold, but your issue is food. You need to set up a new food network soon, or you're just going to be drained dry. Aye, aye, aye. Might lose his starting town center. Really good scenario. Then Prayer Tent has to move as well. Food income, not an option, right? We have all the pastures. We have all the carcasses with the sheep there as well. Now sheep even getting moved closer to the town center. Thought he was trying to run with them. But where, where are the rest of the pastures? He's got one pasture that won't sustain him right now. Look at his food. Viper's almost quadding him up in that work. In fact, he is quadding him up on the food count. He's also quadding up when it comes to oh. the trap count there. Town center running away. Everything's really like running away. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the beauty of Mongols, right? That's how they are designed. B is just playing the civilization exactly, exactly how it should be played. Exactly. You, you know, wait, wait for the, don't worry, folks. I know the Mongols, you hate them, but then you saw they kind of getting weak in their games, and you thought, oh, maybe it's time for a patch. I'm waiting for the patch where they can just pack up their base and go to a better map, because this map doesn't look like one that B wants to be in anymore. <laughs> There's not much left of it for him to actually exist in at this point, as Viper just continues in, and these traction trebuchets are a nuisance. They're shutting down everything. He can't move the towers away, so more bounty for Viper here as well. Still goes for more traps here, more sprinkles as well. Viper knows, okay, not unlikely that soon there will be one big fight happening. If I win this one, I win the game. Yeah, B, he's kind of been seen as this this question mark, this nuisance, this cheeky player. Some people, if they had to give him a, a comic book character, they might call him the Joker. And it feels like that right now, because this entire sequence of events has been him screaming, hit me at Viper. And Viper is hitting him hard. Spiral trades coming out, somewhat favorable for B, but now the Spearman, the man arms can move in. The Maganel difference is really what's gonna scare B. Forces him away once more, but a new outpost going up, which means Yam network extends further into B's territory. Now finding another kill there against the tower. So Mangled from the back. Sprinkled count way better for B though. Viper, that's not the prettiest engagement for him ever. Oh, he's gonna chase in though, because he can just buffer him away. That's the difference maker. And every time he does, the Trebs are burning more buildings. Slowly but surely, B's base is being erased from history. As Viper is screaming, there can be only one Mongol. <laughs> Now relics ungathered as well. Population lead 25. Springles are moving forward. F could find some kills against the Mangal uh, against the Mangonals. Pretty nice move there for B. Another Mangonal by him in the back. Viper overextending a bit. I don't think he should get slop here. I think he's just trying to get that gra that ground because the seed workshop. Like you're going to get paid to burn this, and also you're going to get rid of a 300 wood structure. And what is B running out of in the back of the base? As there's barely any trees back there, wood is his limiting factor. Everything is on fire, everything dirt, uh, burning, and every time Viper just getting paid for the service. The gold is also draining up, under a thousand gold now. B is going to have to come out in the next two minutes. He's running out of wiggle room here and running out of retreat points as he gets ever closer to the back corner. He's doing a good job there with the Springles. Got quite some siege snipes, has a nice advantage. Look at that Viper falling down, Springles count at right now compare that to the oh no it's actually three against four viper is now building some more but still feels like b that's such a tough hold for you it's it's a struggle like b for the last several minutes has not really made the transition we've expected now it's a case if he doesn't have a choice anymore like he really needed to get into maybe some inventory a little bit quicker possibly keep a few lances raid into your opponent's economy so that you slow him down and then you slowly amass your own critical siege to push out. But the issue is that B has always just stayed here staring at what's coming, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like he's for, if he gets hit by rocks falling from the sky long enough, he'll build up a natural immunity to it. Turns out is that how it works? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Personally, I've never tried, but B's doing the experimentation <laughs> for us. So, you know, stay tuned, folks. In the next several minutes, we should know whether it's possible to build up an immunity to falling boulders from the sky. We also have to find out where we are moving for gold. B, we mentioned it earlier. One gold at the front, now taken away. The one in the back running dry any second. Therefore, the two relics, the only gold income that B can really rely on. Viper even on the way to secure his th third sacred site. Now out of gold. Yeah, and at least he's picked up those relics and shuffled them back. But I mean, 
it's still free versus the two that you have passive, right? So Viper's always maintained that lead constantly throughout all this. And these Lancers AFK not doing anything. Like these guys right here should have been raiding into the eco lines, forcing Viper's attention in small quantities. You know, death by a thousand cuts. Because right now, like Viper, he's one punch man. And you've just got to be this kind of Naruto edge type player moving at the speed of light with 10 of you visible at all times. Because <laughs> like, otherwise, Viper is just going to get that critical punch and knock you out. He's looking for it now. And this real count once again in favor of Viper moving in. Clearly has the edge. Maganel could be a difference maker, but not enough troops left. And B is once again out of food. And look, Viper, he just shuffles in. He throws away the army. He's like, that's fine. I've got plenty more where this came from, but you have to be running out quickly here. Gets around the back. What a strategy. He's like, well, when we retreat, you're always in range. And it means it's going to butcher all of them. The villagers run out to try and clean up the siege army, but damage is going to be done here. Viper able to shift away. The Yam Mimit speed soon to run out for Beast Peasantry. And that peasantry is going to fall fast. And that means that Viper will have a clear and decisive lead economically if it hadn't already been established before. Yeah, obviously, Golden Calm behind this is absolutely brutally in favor of villagers. They will deal with the siege quite reasonably well, but obviously, three towers around, make it four towers around, and Springles, they can actually fight back as well. Like, you thought you were burning the Springles, but the real Springles are in the outpost. <laughs> they do the double the damage of these ones. And it's really starting to show. That village account for B by the end of this is going to be under 50. And Viper is going to be over 80. And he calls GG. Viper, he yells there can be only one Khan as he boots B out of Dry Arabia. Ooh, what a beautiful play. And that's the wonderful thing, right? First of all, you have to be happy. The player that built Mango Dice won the game. But also another beautiful thing is that we saw two different approaches to the game. B went for Lancers and Viper tower control into spearmen crossbow to counter all those lances we feel b needed a transition a bit earlier yeah it, it honestly we, we highlight it right like he made a transition but he made uh the siege workshop transition and to quote anyone who chooses to queue with me in a team game this was a very big mistake <laughs> the siege workshop was not the move you saw it right oh, like cool. it, the only way it makes sense is if you either have rushed imperial so you need the tech or you're going for the double production. He needed some static force to build Siege. That was his one Hail Mary. It's kind of baffling when you think about the cost of like getting a blacksmith and getting Siege Engineer improved. It's comparable to paying for the Siege Workshop outright. And then you also have a blacksmith for upgrades still. So I feel like B, while Viper took advantage of the situation, B to a certain extent kind of threw the game in his favor after the initial 15 minutes. And... From there on out, like, we, we just saw it, right? Like, there was no way he was breaking out. This is the strength of the Mongols. I think when you play into Outpost, there's two styles. There's the loose style, where you utilize cavalry to raid the sides, where you just kind of layer these outposts all over the place. And then there's what I call the strongman formation, where you drop some outposts right outside your opponent's base, and you just keep building more of them. 